Not all dinosaurs went extinct. Only the non-avian dinosaurs, the ones that couldn't fly, died out. Birds evolved from a group of dinosaurs called theropods and are still alive today. This means birds are actual living dinosaurs and not just related to them. Crocodiles, on the other hand, aren't living dinosaurs like many think. Dinosaur fossils are not as rare as people think, as long as you're in the right place. Areas like the Hell Creek Formation in North America contain many fossils. If you know what to look for, you can find fossil fragments within minutes. What's rare is finding complete or well-preserved skeletons, because after death, most dinosaurs were scavenged or destroyed by erosion, making full fossils a rare occurrence. Not all dinosaurs were huge. The Epidexipteryx, for example, was about just 12 inches long. Because large bones fossilize more easily than small ones, we tend to find more fossils of big dinosaurs. This is called preservation bias and means we've probably missed many small species. People used to think dinosaurs were slow and clumsy. In reality, many of them were fast and athletic. Carnotaurus could run up to 35 miles per hour, faster than Usain Bolt, and weighed as much as a rhino. Compsognathus, a turkey-sized predator, may have hit 40 miles per hour. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs caused a massive extinction, but it wasn't the worst in Earth's history. The worst extinction happened about 252 million years ago during the Permian-Triassic event. It wiped out over 90% of all species on Earth, both on land and in the oceans. Many people imagine all dinosaurs living at the same time, like T. rex and Stegosaurus, but that's completely wrong. Many species were separated by tens of millions of years. In fact, Stegosaurus lived around 150 million years ago, while T. rex lived about 66 million years ago, meaning more time passed between Stegosaurus and T. rex than between T. rex and us. We don't know what dinosaurs sounded like, and the sounds of dinosaurs in movies or online videos are made up. The only exception is Parasaurolophus. It had a long, hollow crest on its head, and scientists used 3D models to simulate airflow through it. The result sounded like a deep call, similar to an air horn. But even with him, we only have an idea of what sounds it was capable of making, as there's no way to know for certain what it actually sounded like. There was also a similar study on Corythosaurus. T-Rexes didn't have useless arms. They were short, about three feet long, which is about the same size as a human arm, but they were really strong. Studies estimate that a T-Rex could curl over 400 pounds with each arm. We used to think all dinosaurs were scaly like lizards, but that's outdated. Recently, fossils have been found with feathers, fuzz, or quill-like structures, and over 50 dinosaur species have shown evidence of feathers. Also, the image of dinosaurs as colorless, mostly green animals, is outdated. Fossilized pigments preserved in some species with feathers showed that they had complex color patterns. The famous pterosaur isn't actually a dinosaur. It's simply a flying reptile. They were close relatives, but on a different evolutionary branch. The large plates on Stegosaurus's back were once thought to be armor, but they were too thin and fragile for defense. One theory is that they acted as temperature regulators instead. Herbivores and piscivores are often shown as weak or peaceful, but that's not always true. Carnivorous dinosaurs, like the T-Rex, usually only attacked when they were hungry or felt threatened, so they could actually be pretty calm sometimes. Herbivores, on the other hand, might have been more defensive to not get eaten. The idea that dinosaurs were neglectful parents who just laid eggs and left is completely wrong. Scientists have found large nesting colonies, like those of the Myasaura, whose name means good mother lizard, with evidence that parents cared for their kids. It's a popular thought that dinosaurs were pretty dumb. However, while some dinosaurs like Stegosaurus had famously small brains for their body size, many were far from stupid. Smaller predators like Trudontids and Velociraptors had a brain-to-body size ratio similar to that of modern birds, and you have to keep in mind that brain size doesn't directly correlate with intelligence. Also, the evidence of complex social behaviors suggests a pretty good level of intelligence. Many illustrations show theropod dinosaurs like Velociraptor or T-Rex with palms facing down, like they're about to push something, but that's anatomically impossible. Theropod wrists couldn't rotate that way. Their hands faced inward like clapping hands. This was ideal for grasping, not pushing. Some scientists once suggested that T-Rex was too slow to hunt and that it survived by stealing food from other predators. We now know it was definitely a skilled hunter, since, for example, its bite was strong enough to crush bones, a feature that wouldn't really be needed if it only ate leftovers. Also, scientists have found bones of dinosaurs like Triceratops with healed T-Rex bite marks. That means the T-Rex attacked them while they were alive, and they survived the attack, proving that it hunted live prey. Books and toys used to show long-necked dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus with nostrils on top of their skulls, but in real life, that's just wrong. Modern studies of their skulls show the real nostrils were near the tip of the snout, just like in modern animals. 
In old books and movies, dinosaurs were shown dragging their tails on the ground, but we've never found fossil tracks with tail marks. That's because dinosaur tails didn't drag. They were usually held off the ground for balance. For example, velociraptors had stiff tails like carbon fiber rods to help them turn quickly while running. For decades, people thought dinosaurs were cold-blooded like reptiles, but when scientists studied their bones, they found signs of warm-bloodedness. Tiny blood channels called haversion canals, found in warm-blooded animals like birds and mammals, were also found in dinosaur fossils. This suggests many dinosaurs kept their body temperature steady, like mammals do. You may have heard that Brontosaurus never existed, but that was based on a mistake made during the Bone Wars of the 1800s, when two rival scientists rushed to name dinosaurs. One named both Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus, but in 1903, scientists decided they were the same dinosaur. Because Apatosaurus was named first, Brontosaurus was dropped, but in 2015, after a deep study of over 80 specimens and hundreds of traits, scientists found Brontosaurus was different enough to deserve its own name. The idea that a T-Rex couldn't see its prey if they remained still is false. T-Rex had some of the best vision among land predators, and its eyesight is estimated to be 13 times sharper than a human's. It's often said that mammals were small and helpless while dinosaurs ruled the earth. But while most mammals were small, some were capable predators. One example is Rapanomimus, a badger-sized mammal. Fossils have been found with the bones of baby dinosaurs, specifically of Psittacosaurus, inside its stomach. Another fossil shows Repanomimus mid-attack, gripping a dinosaur by the ribs. This shows that some mammals were already eating dinosaurs long before dinosaurs went extinct. Early museum displays showed T-Rex standing upright with its tail touching the ground, like a Godzilla pose, but that's anatomically wrong. Modern studies show T-Rex held its spine horizontal and tail straight out for balance. The asteroid impact 66 million years ago caused a major extinction event, but dinosaurs didn't all die immediately. The extinction likely took decades or even thousands of years, as some small dinosaur species may have survived in isolated areas for a while before disappearing due to environmental changes like lack of food. This is similar to how mammoths survived on Wrangell Island, thousands of years after the rest went extinct. The idea of cloning dinosaurs from DNA in amber is fiction, as DNA breaks down quickly after death. Even in perfect conditions, it's unreadable after millions of years. And keep in mind that most dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago. However, scientists are exploring reverse engineering bird DNA, since birds are dinosaurs. The dinosaur called Oviraptor got its name, which means egg thief, because the first fossil was found lying on a nest of eggs that scientists thought belonged to another species. So for 75 years, people believed it stole eggs. Later on, however, they discovered that the first Oviraptor wasn't a thief at all. It was probably just a parent that died while guarding its own nest. Dinosaurs didn't grow slowly and steadily their whole lives. By examining their bones, scientists found that many dinosaurs, including the T-Rex, had incredible teenage growth spurts. A T-Rex could gain up to 5 pounds a day during this period, going from the size of a chicken to a rhino in just a few years. Archaeopteryx, the famous fossil with both feathers and reptilian features, is often called the missing link between dinosaurs and birds. The truth is that it's not the direct ancestor of all modern birds. Think of it more like an ancient cousin. Evolution is less like a straight ladder and more like a bushy tree with many different branches, and Archaeopteryx is just one twig on the branch that led to birds. Old illustrations often showed sauropods, the giant long-necked dinosaurs, living in swamps and lakes, believing they were too heavy to support their own weight on land. But this is incorrect. Their skeletons, with strong, pillar-like legs similar to an elephant's, were perfectly designed for life on land, and fossilized trackways also proved they walked on solid ground. For a long time, people believed that Stegosaurus had a second brain in its hips to help control its huge back legs and tail. This idea came from the fact that its actual brain was tiny, about the size of a walnut, which didn't seem enough for such a big animal. But modern science has proven this theory wrong. The space in its hips wasn't for a second brain, but for something called a glycogen body. This organ, which birds also have today, stores energy like a natural battery. Some people think that T-Rexes actually had feathers, but we don't know for sure. The evidence we have suggests it was mostly scaly, even though some of its earlier, smaller relatives had feathers, so it's possible that T-Rex had some too, especially as a baby. So far, however, the few fossilized skin patches we've found show scaly skin with no feathers, and the size of the T-Rex suggests that it wouldn't need them for thermoregulation. The idea that dinosaurs were evolutionary failures or inferior to modern animals is completely wrong. Dinosaurs were incredibly successful since they ruled the Earth for over 150 million years, far longer than mammals have so far. Some people think mammals are better just because they dominate today, but that's only because a mass extinction wiped out most dinosaurs, giving mammals a chance to take over. 
The idea that dinosaurs were huge because there was more oxygen back then is a myth. In reality, oxygen levels during much of the Mesozoic were actually lower than today, and dinosaurs didn't grow big because of that. They evolved super-efficient respiratory systems with air sacs and hollow bones, similar to modern birds. This made their bodies lighter and helped them get oxygen more effectively, even in thinner air. The idea that tyrannosaurs were the best predators is a myth. They were great at what they did, but not better in every way than other theropods. Spinosaurids, for example, were specialized for hunting fish and water prey, something tyrannosaurs couldn't do. Carnotaurus was faster, likely able to sprint over 28 miles per hour, and Carcharodonosaurs could take down giant sauropods much bigger than themselves. Tyrannosaurs just had a powerful bite and were built for crushing. We don't really know if dinosaurs hunted in packs. That kind of behavior doesn't show up in fossils, and we don't have anything that clearly proves they work together like wolves do. Sometimes, scientists find fossils of several predators near each other, but that doesn't mean they were hunting together. It could just be a group that died while feeding or were just dragged to the same spot by things like floods. A few scientists think T. rex might have hunted in pairs, but even that isn't certain. If you liked this video, subscribe for similar ones or join my Discord to suggest another.